How is it going, YouTube? Most Sports Network back again. We got a little bit of 2K gameplay going on in the background. I want to recap uh, today's games in the, the Big Ten tournament. I think the first day of the Big Ten tournament is honestly the most fun. Um, I'm going to give my predictions for the rest of the tournament. Um, and then I'll catch you guys back on, like, Monday uh, with my thoughts on the whole thing because that's when the, uh, the tournament will be over. Maybe Sunday, probably not. Um, I'm going to be pretty busy all of Sunday um, for the most part. So... Let's just dive right in. We're going to talk about uh, the four games that happened today, starting with the first game early on in the day, Maryland versus Michigan State. Um, now, with this game, I I didn't wasn't able to catch all of it, um, so I am box score looking a little bit, but I think I kind of got the gist of what went on. So Michigan State, out of the gate, they look like the team that beat Michigan, beat Ohio State, beat Illinois. They looked really good. Um, and then they just were... We're not doing things that you really like to see. Brian Boatangler, no. Okay. Um, so, so, the, so, after they got out to their big lead, I don't know exactly what the number was, they just started doing unnecessary fouls. And uh, the, the refs, Izzo complained about the refs this game. I wasn't watching the game too, too closely. So, I don't know if the refs were like legitimately bad or if Michigan State was just taking bad fouls. Either way, Michigan State had a lot of fouls. Maryland got a lot of free throws off of that, leading to um, big Maryland uh, a Maryland lead at halftime that just shouldn't have been a halftime lead, in all honesty. And then Maryland comes out and essentially they 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 just stay, they just match Michigan State blow for blow, and they had the lead, so that was enough for them to win the game. Michigan State turned the ball over. It was sloppy. They're probably into the tournament. Um, but if you're a Michigan State fan, I mean, you're probably looking at, like, the 10-11 line right now being, you know, 15-13 and 13 if you're in. Like, those wins against Illinois, Ohio State, and Michigan are so huge right now. Uh, but losing that game against Maryland is uh, – that, that's pretty bad news. Just a sloppy game for Michigan State overall, and I liked what I saw from Maryland. Um, Eric Ayala, shots were not falling at a high clip, but, you know, he did what he had to do. Aaron Wiggins impressed me a lot. Um, shot pretty good percentage from the field, made his free throws. Uh, Aaron Wiggins is a nice player for that uh, Maryland program, and assuming he comes back next year, uh, Maryland's going to have a, a nice senior core of Ayala and, um, Ayala and Wiggins. Uh, Daryl Morsell, as usual, excellent defensively. So uh, kudos to Maryland there on that end of the ball. Uh, Michigan State, uh, Malik Hall and Aaron Henry still did their thing. Otherwise, like, Bingham played well. Other than him, there wasn't much going on for Michigan State offensively. And you can tell they only scored 57 points. So stinker for Michigan State. I think they're probably still in, but not, not inspiring if you're a Spartan fan. Uh, so let's go to the next game. Minnesota, Ohio State. Uh, this this was the one I'd usually make a f angry reaction video to, but Ohio State actually won. Um, despite their very, very best efforts not to, uh, they did win at the end of the day. So let's talk about this one for a little bit. Ohio State got out to like a 13-0 run to start the game. Turned the ball over a bunch, and Minnesota still was just stinky. Um, and then Ohio State, they they just carried that into a a pretty nice like 30 39 27 halftime lead. We're thinking, okay, Ohio State, they're finally they're finally a thing again. They're finally looking pretty good. Then sometime in the second half, I think this is probably roughly with like four minutes left of the game. Uh, Ohio State's up by like 13, and Minnesota. They start, they start going on their, their run. The run Ohio State gives up every single time. Uh, led by Marcus Carr, who is an absolute stud. Uh, I really like um, I really like Marcus Carr. I think he probably will make it in the NBA in some capacity. He did really well, and same as Jamal Mashburn. Both those guards from Minnesota um, played really well today. Also, shout out to Brandon Johnson. He was a trooper. Uh, Minnesota was getting kind of screwed on some calls today in certain spots. And Aaron or Brandon Johnson was getting – his body was getting freaking abused. Um, so shout out to him. He was a trooper today. 
Minnesota claws back slowly but surely and with barely any time left in the game because Ohio State doesn't know how to beat the press late in the game. Uh, Minnesota brings the game within one. They never led the entire game. It was within one. Um, Ohio State able to finally get the ball in, makes their free throws. Minnesota makes one, misses one. Ohio State gets the ball in again, makes their free throws again, and that does it for the game. Um, it, it's disheartening as a Buckeye fan to see Ohio State choking these leads game after game, but, you know, they held on, especially against Marcus Carr, who was heating up. You know, you take it at this point. You take it to see another day, um, get their 20th win of the year. They play Purdue tomorrow, a team they've lost to twice. Really hard to beat a team three times in the Big Ten, but, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens in that department tomorrow. Uh, again, I'm happy, so not too much to say about the Ohio State game here other than thank God they didn't blow it. Um, kudos to Minnesota for playing a close game and covering. Uh, the next game, we're probably going to talk about the team. I think Maryland was a team I'm very impressed with today. I don't know how they'll fare against Michigan. The other team I'm super impressed with today was Rutgers. Uh, they Indiana has not been great recently. Um, and yeah, they've just been on a, a horrible losing streak as of late. In their last, what, I think in their, like, their last nine, ten games, uh, their only wins are against um, like Minnesota and like an overtime win against Northwestern. Uh, so Indiana just not in a good spot. Rutgers comes out kind of flat. Indiana has a lead for a lot of uh, the beginning of this game. Um, Rutgers lead, run at the end of the half. That was very impressive in my eyes. Um, and then that, that gets followed up by a just a stifling performance on defense in the second half. They let Indiana score 18 in that second half today. And Rutgers only scored 28 in that second half. That's all they needed. Uh, they won this game in a gritty Rutgers fashion. These are the games that um, Steve Peichel and Rutgers want to play. Um, and all of the all of the people were uh, essentially essentially doing their parts. Ron Harper looked really good. Jacob Young looked really good as he usually does. Um, Miles Johnson t double double as he likes to do. Um, and Paul um, McKay, McKay, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, I, I, they, I heard them say it because he was making some clutch shots today. Um, not, not shooting a high percentage, but he did pretty well. So just kudos to Rutgers, Indiana. I don't know what's wrong with them. Um, when, when Thad Mata got fired at Ohio State, I was pounding the table. Um, I think most Ohio State, fans, Ohio, State, Ohio State fans were to get Archie Miller. I think Archie Miller might have already even been signed to um, – might have been signed to uh, Indiana at the point where Thad Mata was gone from Ohio State. Archie Miller has just not panned out so far in Indiana. And I don't really know how, especially with all of that talent in Indiana uh, for basketball, I don't know how it's been that big of a struggle. But Indiana, it's essentially Trace Jackson Davis uh, and not a lot else doing anything. As Like no one's averaging double figures except for him and Armand Franklin, who came off the bench, didn't hit a three, he was 0 for 5 today. Um, Al Durham, one for four. Jerome Hunter, one for three. That's their three-point percentage. Indiana in total was a total of two for 16 from three. Not going to win many games that way. And there's there's a level of uncertainty surrounding that Indiana basketball program uh, that worries you, especially since Trace Daxon Davis is uh, likely gone next year. Um, if, he, if he wants to be, I think he could make the league. Um, and I just think Indiana is – probably the biggest loser of the day because at least Michigan State uh, is probably going to make the tournament at the end of the day. Indiana, I don't even think will make the NIT at this stage. So kudos to Rutgers. They're in. So good for them. And they have a tough one against Illinois tomorrow. That'll be a fun game, I think. Um, and the final game, uh, a game that as an Ohio State fan makes me feel a little better about the, um, the Minnesota collapse. It's Wisconsin just completely craps the bed at the end against um, Penn State. 
they barely hold on to win. Um, but at the end of the game, Penn State had an opportunity to win the game, which uh, Ohio State didn't even necessarily let Minnesota do. So, I mean, looking at things, Penn State just played – they played their brand of basketball. They, they were behind early. They – Stay. They stuck around though. They didn't let Wisconsin's like fourteen point lead or whatever they had. They didn't let that fluster them too much, and they battled back. Uh, Wisconsin is in a similar boat to Ohio State as of late, where they lost what was it five of their last six, and their only win came against Northwestern. So Wisconsin was reeling. They needed this win against Penn State in a bad way, and they got it. Um, but it wasn't without a, a huge fight. Um, Brad Davidson and um, Aleem Ford led the way for Wisconsin, and they had to. Like Demetric Trice, senior leader, wasn't doing too much. Um, Micah Potter was essentially non-existent. Uh, Reavers, again, not doing too much. Nate Reavers is like a problem a lot of the time, mismatch-wise, but he's been kind of quiet as of late. So, I mean, Ohio, Wisconsin's in this really weird situation where th this year should be their year. They're all seniors. They're, they've all been there, and they just aren't in a spot to – they're just not putting themselves in a spot to, like, make a run here in my eyes. Um, they play – who's the three seed? They play Iowa tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and they're going to have their work cut out for them. Uh, Iowa is just relentless on offense, and Wisconsin can score, but like, I don't think at the clip that Iowa can. And we saw they have some some flaws on defense today. Um, so shout out to Penn State; they played a pretty solid game, top to bottom. Shout out to Wisconsin; they did win, which you know. That's all you can say. They won the game at the end of the day, so uh, they they live to see another day. So let's talk about the matchups tomorrow. So first of all, we have Maryland versus Michigan. Uh, I think Maryland is in a decent spot for this game as far as uh, as far as a one versus eight matchup goes. I think Maryland's in an, an okay spot. Uh, I don't think they're gonna win. Uh, at all but um, I, I think they do have the talent in Ayala and Wiggins and Morsell to give Michigan a, a run for their money Michigan has been kind of flat as of late so I'm not going to say Maryland doesn't have a shot in this game um, Michigan's super talented and they, they need to get rolling uh, before March Madness goes as well um so I'm, I'm going to lean Michigan in this one, but I think this one's going to be more fun than a lot of people uh, give credit or are thinking. Uh, next next game, we're going to have Ohio State-Purdue. Um, Purdue won the first two matchups in the series this year. First one was a without EJ Liddell. Purdue won by seven. That seems about right overall. If Ohio State doesn't have EJ Liddell... That's probably like a 10-point swing. That's how good Liddell is. Um, and so that, that would make sense for Purdue to win that one. Then the second one, Ohio State did their Ohio State thing, and they just they just blew a lead against Purdue. So I think these teams are about as similar as you could get talent-wise. I think Trevion Williams and um, EJ Liddell, great matchup for one another. Both teams have shooters. Um, Ivy and Dwayne Washington Jr. is uh, going to be a great matchup again. Great, great young core there in Purdue um, for a while. I, I honestly, I, I like Purdue in this game. Uh, it's, again, it's really hard to win three times in the Big Ten. I'm cheering for Ohio State. But I, I honestly think that um, I think Purdue is in the best spot to win this game tomorrow, especially in the state of how Ohio State has played as of late. So Ohio State going to be reeling a bit going into the tournament as well. Um, next game, Rutgers-Illinois. Um, Illinois is just so damn talented. Illinois is ridiculous. 
I don't I don't know how you I don't know how you beat this team in all honesty. Uh, just top to bottom, I think this is a complete team. Kofi Coburn and um, George's whatever you call his last name, they're ridiculous big men. Um, Ayodisumu, Andre Curbelo, Trent Frazier, crazy guard play. Um, yeah, this this is a this is a really tough one. I I don't. This is unfortunate for Rutgers. Rutgers is going to be in the tournament, probably like seven, like a seven seed to a, a nine seed, I think, maybe a ten even. Um, I, so I think Rutgers is in. I don't think this game matters too much for them. Illinois really wants that one seed, and if they lose this, they probably lose the one seed. Um, we'll see. I think Rutgers is scrappy. I think Rutgers can hang in there. If they hang in there for 35 minutes, at the end of the day, they can win this game. Um, but if not, it's, it's, it's Illinois. Uh, and then finally, Wisconsin, Iowa, like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be obvious and just pick all of the, the favorites to win. Wisconsin just doesn't look good. I'm not impressed with them at all. And they have to be an Iowa team who's playing very good basketball. They had a stretch in the middle of the year where they had a couple losses, uh, rattled off in a row, but I think Iowa is back to where they want to be they only have seven losses on the year their last loss is to michigan otherwise they've won i think seven of eight um leading back to that weird indiana loss that should have never happened and then uh, games of the year against illinois uh, and ohio state uh, like that caliber so iowa is in a very great spot and i think i think they should be a very senior wisconsin team um, i think iowa's as far as experience goes, are in a similar spot. So honestly, I think the only game, because Ohio State or Purdue, whoever wins tomorrow, it's not really an upset. I think the only game that like really could be an upset watch territory is the Michigan-Maryland game. I think Maryland can match up with Michigan um, in certain ways, despite um, what happened in their matchups earlier in the year. Michigan dominating both of them uh, one the the first one at maryland less um i think that's just like the best matchup just looking how illinois and iowa are playing at the moment so that's my picks for tomorrow i'm gonna stop rambling um, that's all i have to say about the game today thank you guys so much for watching i've been low sports network i will see you guys next time peace out